I, I'm glad you mentioned that. It's, it's, it's really an important question. So here's my take on it. The reason why I don't want to discuss my poems yeah. is that I don't think I'm the right person to discuss them. Oh, For example, okay. th the poem that like is 30 years old, mm -hmm. I, I'm not that person anymore. So if you say, what does that poem mean? I, I'm, I mean, you say, well, you wrote it, but I, I'm not, I, I, I didn't just write it, and I'm not, I'm not that person anymore. In fact, any of these poems, I, I'm not exactly the person who wrote the poem because maybe they're from a year ago or two years ago or a few months ago or whatever, and we're, we're changing all the time. So what I was thinking at that time, what I was feeling at that time, what I was remembering at that time, I may not have access to that anymore. So... When you send a poem out into the world, there are readers. And so, okay, the readers get to make those determinations. And I'm not saying poems don't have meaning, but that I'm not sure the author needs to be privileged in that way as saying what the meaning is. Because to be honest, a lot of authors are liars. And a lot of them are uh, jokesters. And so a lot of the stuff that you get when you have poets uh, or writers interviewed is just all kinds of jokes because they're, they're just irritated by the question and they just don't want to give you a straight answer. And so a lot of that stuff can't be trusted. So as far as I'm concerned, if the author said it, I don't believe it at all. If he wrote it, I believe it absolutely. But whatever he says, I absolutely discount. I, I don't want to look at that at all. Uh, because he may not be, he or she may not be the best reader of his or her work. He might be a wonderful inventor. He just might not be smart. Uh, he might not be insightful. He might not really know what's there. And I'll give you uh, an example of that. Uh, I have a friend who teaches poetry out in California. He's taught my poems uh, to his class. And we were both living in New York uh, a long time ago. And he invited me to come to a class in which he was going to have the class read and discuss my poem. So it was fascinating. I was there listening and really enjoying the fact that he was, chose my poem to, to do. And... Um, in the, the poem was about uh, a young boy uh, uh, seeing a shark pulled out of the ocean and then being clubbed to death by some men. Uh, it's way before Jaws. Personal seething, okay? So I'm sitting in this class, and the class is discussing it, and one student raises his hand and says, seething. Oh, that's the shark. <laughs> and I was like, what? It's like, because I, when I wrote it, it was like, I was, I was want to talk about seething, you know? And when, when, when that student said that, I realized that I am not the expert on my poems, my poems out there, and there's all kinds of stuff that may or may not be in it that I may or may not have access to. So that was fast, that was like really, really fascinating. And it's, I mean, it is an extraordinary how when you put that object out there, what people do with it or what they see in it is very interesting. Now, the question of whether or not the thing has any meaning or not, or your teachers, you know, telling you what it means or all that stuff. All that stuff is contained in the poem. So if it's successful, the poem itself will help you to its meaning by looking at its organization, its pattern, its form, its, uh, you know, the repetitions within it, what's emphasized, what's at the end of lines, how it begins, how it ends, those, those kinds of things. Just like we saw in that Frost poem, uh, the, uh, the Road Not Taken. I'm not sure if Frost was sitting here, he might, not get, up, he might get up and just say, well, that's crazy, or that's, you know, that's bull. You know, and, and fine, he's entitled to his opinion, but it's no better than anybody else's opinion. So I think that's what comes out of the, I think that's what the poem tells me. Not what he told me, or what he wanted it to mean, but what the poem itself means. So you have to look at the evidence of, of the, the, the thing in front of you, the artifact, the, uh, the text. And all the answers to what something means come out of the evidence. What kinds of words were chosen? What kinds of feelings are invoked by certain kinds of words? Why this choice and not that choice? I always think that poets or all kinds of writers are kind of like, you know, they're kind of like optometrists. You know, when you, when you go for an eye exam and it's like, uh, how's that look? You know, it's better or worse, you know? What about this? What about this? And that's what writers do. That's what I do when I, when I write. I ask myself those questions, and I think that's what readers also do when they read, think about, well, why, why is that there? Could you access the Tanzanite reference to my son's gem that he gave to his, you know, wife? No, but do you need that for the poem? I don't think so. 
I mean, it's interesting. It's just not, you know, so the kind of stuff that you get from authors is like, oh, you know, I was in Bermuda, you know, uh, drinking Mai Tais when I wrote that. Oh, you know, it's interesting, but it's just not necessarily significant. It's significant, but of a personal significance. It's not significant in terms of the meaning of the poem. So there are all kinds of things that may be interesting and significant, but may not be meaningful. And I think when you look for meaning, you have to look for the thing itself, the text itself, and then out of that, you're able to, to, to come up with the meaning. Um, and if I were to try to explain the meaning of my poems, I'd have to see it just as a critic or any, anybody else would and look 